Hello, my name is Fred or Snit for those who don't know me and welcome to the ultimate beginners guide uh, In this guide we'll go over the very basics of how you get started because this game can be quite confusing to most people It's gonna be done in uh, two stages uh, basically, I'm going to uh, Start doing all the basics just like they're supposed to be done well, supposed to be done. You can do layouts and stuff however you want, but I'll just do the basics at normal speed in the game, like sped up. And then I'm going to turn on debug mode so everything becomes instant, and I'll show you some more advanced things after a couple of minutes. But first of all, I've started a normal game, um, just a random seed. You can copy this seed down here into a custom game creation if you want the same map as me. Uh, but first of all, let's go over the basics in the UI. So up to the left, we have our population counter, stress levels, uh, immune systems, and the amount of food we have, or how many calories we have. Uh, the little manage schedule button here, you can manage, this will make sense uh, after you watch the video. We can manage how many hours of the day they're going to work, how much downtime they want to have, and sleep and such. Uh, usually when I get a bit further into the game, I increase the amount of downtime so they can relax and get their morale up a bit more. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is to dig things out to just get some materials. Like this, how... Oh, well, that's fine. And then we can start building. So let's see, one, two, three, four... I think like this. Uh, yeah, that's good. I'm just gonna do a little basic, uh, a little basic uh, layout. Do, 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 just one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'll explain why I'm doing things in a certain way. I'm assuming you have figured out or see how. I am building stuff. The first thing you want to put down is an outhouse because otherwise they'll just m like make a mess on the floor and it's not very good. You want to get that outhouse, outhouse up and running so they have somewhere to go to the toilet. Uh, you can see these oxalites. Uh, you don't want to dig these blocks. They'll go away automatically. They ex like they shoot out oxygen until they go away. And oxygen production is one of the key features of the game, and we kind of want that free oxygen. Let's see. That's good. Take some more. Just getting some basics done for you. So. Some of the things we have that we need to keep like keep in mind, if you've never played this game before, these overlays up here, I'm going to use the quick buttons for them, which is the F buttons. So we have oxygen overlay, where we can see the different gases. Now, obviously, in the beginning, we'll mostly see carbon dioxide and oxygen, because when they breathe oxygen, it creates carbon dioxide, just like in real life when you breathe. And we need to, we need oxygen to survive, basically. Let's see. Okay. As soon as we have that built, we wanna. I'll just show you how I start. I wanna get some power, and for that, we need this copper ore. Uh, might as well dig out a fair bit. go and now we can start with some power production so I always place on one manual generator and two batteries and this takes metal ore you can always make things out of different materials for example the tiles right now we only have sandstone but we'll have and you see sandstone gives plus 10 percent the core uh, and the core is important for your duplicates morale 
uh, we can go to the decor screen and we'll see right here we have plus 45 decor over here next to the outhouse we have minus 18 and if we go to the, mo the vital screen which you can find up here you'll see the morale expectation of these guys right now is one yeah if we have below if their morale is below the expectation the stress level will start going up and we don't want them to get stressed because they'll do a lot of stuff we don't want for example if we take a researcher and name them according to what job i'm gonna make them do uh, a researcher is destructive so if there if this one's stress goes up to 100 percent it'll start breaking stuff in the base our farmer is a binge eater and will eat i think 5000 calories or something a day instead of uh, uh, instead of their 1000 uh, our cook is also been cheater they can be vomiters and start vomiting and like just ruin stuff stress management is an important part of the game as soon as we have our power on obviously we want to connect them and whenever you make wires or pipes or whatever you want to hide them behind tiles and ladders and stuff because they'll reduce the decor in the room and lower morale and they don't when they're behind ladders or behind tiles uh, the reason I leave one opening between each ladder is because I'm gonna run a lot of pipes and stuff that's gonna have to be shown and also later on you can make fire poles so they can go down quickly and you know a lot of things There we go, we start making some power. Then we want to build our first station, which is the research station. And we want to hook that up to some power. That is going to allow us to access the research. Oh, look at that, they're on downtime. So they're going to go eat, go to the bathroom, stuff like that. And then afterwards they're going to sleep. It's quite useful to re read all these tips in game the first time you play. Uh, after we've done the research thing, you'll see when I start researching how that's done. Uh, we're going to want to <coughs> start looking at rooms to increase morale, because eventually we want to give these guys specific jobs. And when you give them higher jobs to do better things and faster and you know all this kind of stuff, their morale expectation goes up and an easy way to deal with morale expectations is this I'll show you so one two something like that uh, you have this the last overlay up to the right which is F11 on your keyboard is a room overlay so all these enclosed stuff is rooms yeah. So if we make rooms, they're enclosed with doors, we can make them specific rooms by putting things into them. And the first one I'm going to build is these. It's a barracks where I'll have... It's basically their sleeping quarter. It'll improve their morale when they're in it, and the only criteria is that you have normal beds, and there's no industri industrial machinery, and the size of the room is between 12 and 64 tiles. Sorry about that. Uh, I had to fix something real quick. Um, but yeah, uh, I think this room that we're making is going to be... Uh, let's just do this for now. This room is going to end up being like 32 tiles or something. And we put a door. And as soon as they've built this, you'll see it comes a room. There you go, it's a room. And now, we can put in beds, and it'll become a barrack. The research station is also done. That means we can click the research station and click research, or click research up here, or R on your keyboard. 
so this is the research uh, well menu, and we can select things to research. I always start with basic farming, just to get compost bins for the toilets, so we don't have... Because the toilets use dirt and create polluted dirt. Polluted dirt, when I don't have a compost bin, will just lay around on the floor and create polluted oxygen around it. And we don't really want polluted oxygen this early, because we can't really deal with it just yet. They can breed it, but their immune systems will go down eventually. Uh, so yeah, here we go. We made a bed. That has made this into barracks. And it's fairly free tiles at the minute. Okay, so I'll, I was one off. Or two off. It's going to be 34 when we get rid of this. But yeah, so the research, how that works, is, you see, we need 15 normal research here. Higher ones need two different ones. So 15 normal research, you'll see the progress bar on this researcher. When that finishes, that's one point of research. Good to know. When you create beds and stuff like that, that's uh, duplicate specific. When it's time for sleep, they'll automatically assign a bed to them. You can also manually assign which bed they're going to have. Which I like doing. Uh, there we go. So that is the basics. The basics you need to do to get started. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to enable debug mode so I can do things instantly. So you don't, you guys don't have to sit here and watch them dig and, you know, all these kind of crap. Sorry for the expression. There we go. Debug mode is on. And that means I have all the recipes and things I do are instant. And this is just so I can show you guys... Uh, let's see, let's do... Uh, I like doing... Uh, let's see, like this one. I like leaving a two tile high uh, room uh, o over beds, for example, just so I can put paintings here later to increase morale. But now, if we look at the morale thing, the only morale boost we have at the minute is from this. And it's because this gives some decor, and also light gives increased decor. Let's see. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to go to research. And I can instantly research things now. So my researcher is a bit useless. But we have something important uh, to get from that research we just did. Remember, I have all recipes, but you just got this compost uh, from your research. I'm gonna put it, yeah, I'll just put it here for now. Uh, and that, they'll take the polluted dirt from uh, the toilet or like spoiled food and stuff like that and compost it so it doesn't, so it doesn't just pollute stuff around it, but it becomes uh, fertilizer. Uh, next on the schedule, so to say, let's see how much room we have downwards. Okay, so next thing I want to do is the I want to build. Let's see. Uh, I want to get advanced research. Yep. As soon as you get advanced research, uh, you'll see here in a second what that does. That gives us access to the jobs board and to our supercomputer. The supercomputer is what's needed to research these purple, this intermediate research. The novice research, which these left ones require, you can do from the research station, but for everything else we need the supercomputer as well. The supercomputer needs power, just like the research station. But, 
now we can see. Uh, so, errors. Why isn't this running? Obviously none of them are running, running because of no research focus selected, because we're not researching things. But also, to use the supercomputer, you need a, a, person, a duplicant with a researcher job. So then we go to either this thing and click jobs, or click jobs up here, to the right. And this is, this is actually something that killed me the first time I played it, by giving them jobs. And I'll explain why. So, remember they have a... Here. They have a morale expectation, right? You need to meet that expectation. And, when we give them jobs, there it increases. So, if I were to give, uh, let's say... I have someone master uh, the digger job, for example. Then they can, I can upgrade them to a miner, right? But that means all of a sudden I need eight morale for them to not go stressed, and that's kind of hard to keep up with. But yeah, I want to put my researcher on a researcher job, and when I select which duplicate to use, you'll see the heart means they like doing it, right? That's when you show your duplicates, they have these things that they like doing. For example, digging, researching, and stuff like that. And then the num number three is that they have a relevant... That's, that's the relevant skill, right? Which is learning in this case. We will put the researcher to be research. Oh, well, if I didn't have debug mode on, she'd run up here to the job board and put on her hat and be a researcher. And as we can see now on the supercomputer, that error message is gone. But, insufficient resources, water. So we need water for that one to run. Luckily, we have some right here. And that means we can put a pitcher pump down. That's a bit annoying. I'll just do it like this for now. There we go. And now they can go collect water from it and put it into the supercomputer when it's being used. Kind of easy. Uh, so that was the advanced research stuff. Next, uh, I usually want to research meal preparation right away so we can have farm tiles. So instead of using these planter boxes, which look like this. Uh, let's see, furniture, no, floats, sorry, food, planter box, here, little boxes you can plant things in. I want to research meal preparation. That gives me access to the grill, which is a more advanced foods, mess table, which they'll sit down and eat that when they eat, egg cracker, to crack critter eggs and use them for food, and the farm tile. The farm tile, obviously you don't have to delete tiles to put other tiles there, you can just do them on each other. The farm tiles allow us to plant things directly on the tiles. Yeah, not too shabby. And over here, I'll put my... Not supposed to delete these oxalites, keep them until they go away on their own. I'm, I can't stress that enough, because the oxygen they produce is very important. But now, we can start planting some uh, mealwood seeds. But we only have two. You can either like do them manually, each like this, or click it and copy settings from this one that we already ordered one from. And copy them to that. So they start planting them. These specific plants, if you look at them, they have requirements to grow. Uh, you need air pressure within a certain range, atmosphere, like certain, uh, certain uh, gases, oxygen, polluted oxygen or carbon dioxide, and body temperature. Then the duplicates will fertilize them manually, and that requires dirt. Since I copied settings, 
these have been ordered to put in uh, seeds without having seeds. So it says no seed available. But by growing mealwood, we'll automatically get more seeds and these will be planted as soon as they can. When it comes to food, creating food, you'll always start with this micro musher. This micro musher needs power. And from it, you can make mush bars in the beginning. So then the duplicates, I'll show you what it looks like. Oh. I can't actually do it in the debug mode, it seems. But they'll run and get dirt and water. And someone will stand here and press them into bars that you can eat. The thing is, I want to stop using this as soon as I can. I always do that until you can get this one. Because I don't want to use water for food. So, as soon as I can in this game... Uh, let's see. You're not going to do this right away. But, you know. As soon as I can, I want to get farms up and running. Which have meal wood in them, like this. And then one row of blossom seeds. The reason for that is I can then have an electrical grill which we just researched, remember? And in here I'll put this grizzle berry which uses the berries from blossom seeds uh, to make food. And I'll put that on continuous so as soon as there's any uh, ingredients available the, the chef or whoever is has the priority to go cook We'll go cook it. And I'll stop making these. Because we'll still be able to eat the meal wood without cooking it. And then now and then we'll have this good food available. That means we stop using water for food. We'll start using water to grow... Uh, to grow these blossom seeds. Because they require water. But at least we're not using water. There's a very good reason for this. A very good reason. And that is to do with germs and disease. So when you when you use water for different things, for example, let's say we build a toilet. We can research that. Let's see, plumbing. First we'll research if we get a liquid pump and some piping, you know, an event to drop uh, liquid from the pipe. Then, and I'll, I do this quite quickly in my games, I get the sanitation. So I get lavatories and showers and sinks. This means I now have access to something pretty damn awesome. I will just make a room out of this. So now, all of a sudden, I have access to plumbing pumps and pipes, and also automatic toilets that don't need emptying or filling of dirt, like uh, like these outhouses. I also have access to showers, because they need to shower. And I have access to a sink, instead of a wash basin. Wash basin basically means that uh, they'll manually go fill water in it and empty dirty water, right? A sink and shower and everything runs on piping and is automatic and doesn't take a lot of time from you guys. So, let me dig this out just to have some room. Now, in the beginning, when you make your first bathroom, you're going to make it more like this. You're gonna have outhouses and you're gonna have a wash basin. As soon as you have outhouse and a wash basin, it becomes the latrine and increases morale when they're in it. Eventually, you'll switch that out for lavatories and showers. So, and I usually make the showers in a separate room because they're not required for this. Oh, sorry. We use a sink. But as we can see, they need liquid input and liquid output. Let's dig another hole here. 
I've just made this to show you you need a separate uh, area for your polluted water, your dirty water. Your dirty water needs to go somewhere and not into your normal water. But what we can do now, just to show you the basics, is that we can put a liquid pump in our water supply. We'll hook it up to the electric system in obviously a nicer way than I'm doing right now. Then we go to plumbing and we grab a liquid pipe. So these points on things, as it says out here, <clears throat> building intake means where the water needs to come in and the green one is where it comes out. So let's give all of these water and then they need to output water as well. I'm doing this in a very ugly fashion right now, but you know, just showing you. Now we have water for them. And if we go to the water screen, we'll see water being pumped and where it's stored and everything. This is just up here as all other overlays and it's F6 for water. Now we can get rid of the outhouse. And as you can see here in the outhouse, there's polluted dirt that gives out polluted polluted oxygen right there. They'll pick that up and put it in the compost. The compost will make fertilizer out of it. Now, this pump is not using electric because the pipes are full. Uh, but right now, as you can see, they're on their way to use the toilets and every time they pause the sink, they'll use it. And we'll see what happens. The pump starts going to fill up the pipes again and we get some polluted water. Not too shabby. The polluted water obviously goes out into our polluted water area. Here's the trick. Water management is one of the hardest things in this game for a new player. Because you'll run out of water eventually. Because you'll use water for different things, you know, like the supercomputer uses water and doesn't give anything back, like water-wise. But these latrines or lavatories, I'll show you what it says on the description. They use, every time someone uses them, it uses 5 kilograms of water. It'll output 11.7 kilograms of water. That means that every time someone uses it, we gain water in our system. It's polluted water, but we've gained water. We have more polluted water than we had water going in. This is a key factor to water management in the beginning. Because as soon as you start getting a bit of polluted water, you might want to... Hang on, let me just fix this up real quick. As soon as we have polluted water that's on a usable level of amount, we can go to our research menu and we might want to research to here. So we have filtration first. That gives us the, uh, uh, let's see here, liquid filter. A liquid filter is really good because we can have an input of liquid, we can have a filtered output and the normal output. So if I set this filter to, let's say, uh, normal water, that means that when we shoot liquid into this, all liquids except for water will come out of the green one and the rest of the, and the pure water is going to come out of the orange one, middle one. So we can separate water. It's good to know. And then, next research would be distillation, because we want this, the water sieve, or however you pronounce that. So I don't really know what I'm guessing here. But as you can see, it produces clean water from polluted water using sand. So all of a sudden, if we, let me just sheet and add in some polluted water. Uh, we want water, polluted water, 500, ignore this, it's just 
Let's see, is that a good? Yeah, works. Oh, I'm drowning that little hatch. Um, now we have some polluted water, right? Obviously, when you're doing this, you want to do the piping way nicer. You want to have ladders everywhere and so on. But now we can build on the refinement a water sieve. This thing is really good. And to flip things, as you can see, I'm flipping it. You use the well, press O to rotate it, says. But this thing is very useful. That's such a bad place to place it. Let's change that. Put it here for now. We're gonna need power. Oops. There we go, it's got power. And now we need plumbing. So we're gonna need a liquid pump in our polluted water. That liquid pipe is going to pump water into the sieve. The sieve is going to pump water. Here you can use a <coughs> liquid bridge, remember, input output. And we can pump it to... Uh, 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 oh, another liquid bridge. I'll just put it here, get rid of that one. So now, when we turn this on, it's going to pump water into the sieve. The sieve can't work without a filtration medium, which in this case is sand, right? So we'll give the, our little duplicates a way to get to it. And they're gonna go grab sand and bring it to the sieve. Now the sieve starts working. And look, it's cleaning that water. And remember what I said about the toilets? The toilets <clears throat> make more polluted water than they use water. Yeah? So, since they make more polluted water than used water, this system right now, as long as we're not using the supercomputer or the micro musher, is gaining water. We're not losing water, we're gaining water. We're gonna build more things that will use water, but right now we're gaining water. And the reason why I wanted to stop using this as soon as possible, because we don't want to use water for food, is because of germs. So if we go to the germs overlay, which is F9. Obviously the toilets, all the output of the toilets is going to be germ filled, which means this polluted water has germs in it, which means even though this cleans the water, it's still going to have germs in it. So see here, it starts to build up some germs. We don't want to use this water now for our food. That would be silly. That's a good way to get get your guys to get ill, right? So avoid that. But this is a pretty good start for a water system. Uh, obviously it's going to take you a bit longer without this debug mode that I'm using just to show you. But yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is oxygen control. So if you go to the oxygen overlay, which is F1, or up here to the right, we'll see now that in the bottom it's starting to uh, it's starting to build up some carbon dioxide. We can't breathe that, right? And up here the oxygen is starting to get a bit thin because they're breathing it. And also I've been digging out a lot of areas and then the, the gases obviously expand and become thinner compared to in here, where there's a lot of oxygen. So we're gonna need to start doing some oxygen production. In the beginning, because we researched the basic farming, we got the algae terrarium. So now we have two options to make oxygen. We have the algae deoxidizer and the algae terrarium, these two. 
the algae deoxidizer will they'll put algae into it and it uses power from the power grid right so if you click it you'll see requirements algae and power but it'll output oxygen the other option is to use algae terrarium where we don't need power but we need algae and water so if we place two of those down here you'll see what happens so our guys are gonna go get algae and get water to fill these up and they're gonna start eating up the carbon dioxide and make oxygen the issue with these are compared to the deoxidizers is that they require a lot of manual work and you obviously need your duplicants to dig and like do all these things but all of a sudden they have to fill up water in these uh, they have to they have to uh, add algae to them but also empty them because as soon as these are full they need to go empty them of polluted water and um, we'll see how long that takes but what essentially happens is you get jugs of polluted water the jugs of polluted water will pollute air around them they'll they'll make polluted air around them uh, as long as they're just jugs on the floor to fix that we do this we build a bottle emptier and this one we don't want all liquids we want them to only out to only pour out polluted water here right because this is our polluted water reservoir and as soon as there's jugs they'll go and empty them in there and problem solved with the polluted oxygen that creates around the jugs not too shabby later on you'll need a lot more complicated systems to make oxygen for example obviously I have all recipes unlocked you're going to use electrolyzer an electrolyzer looks like this it'll have an input through pipes of water it'll use power right and it's gonna make oxygen and hydrogen hydrogen is a gas that they can't breathe uh, but that's pretty much your option uh, in endgame you're gonna need these right but that means that without the terrariums your carbon dioxide is gonna build up and not get rid of and then we use this carbon skimmer it takes a water input with pipes takes power and it's gonna have an output of polluted water uh, and it's gonna create some heat around it but that's essentially how you deal with oxygen later on there are some some creative ways to get more oxygen uh, through using natural resources and stuff like that but that's a bit down the line <laughs> so to say but the next thing because I have all these pipes I might as well make some showers for my people and you do want them to have one shower each always toilets you can have about half of the amount of duplicants in toilets but showers you want one each plumbing and in this case just to make life easy I'm gonna do this so I'm going to do, do, do liquid bridge this yeah And this is starting to look a bit complicated, I can imagine. But now, now we can actually make something really cool out of this. Okay, so I'm going to change how I've built the system. And you're going to see what I mean. So instead of letting polluted water go into the polluted water pool, I'm going to send all my polluted water see straight into this yeah so instead of right now I don't really have use of this pump 
So I'm going to disable it. A duplicate will run over and disable it. Oh, look at that. I can have a new duplicate. Come on. Oh, it's disabled automatically. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do now is something that's quite interesting. When you... Uh, this is going to look a bit complicated, I realize, because of how I did the pi piping, but try to follow along. When you use a liquid bridge, yeah. so if I place a liquid bridge right there, with a pipe that goes somewhere, let's say we bring it here. And let's get rid of that pipe. Oh, got some water everywhere. As you can see, the showers and the toilets don't have a water input from the normal water anymore. They only have an input from the skimmer. A skimmer, sorry, water sieve. Uh, but these liquid bridges work in a very interesting way. Which makes it so that when the water comes here and it's supposed to be divided between these two options, it'll always go through the water bridge as long as there's room in those pipes. So if we just play it now and wait for them to go to bed, we can mop up this water first. Just let them go to bed, or we can change their schedule so they actually run through the toilets. <laughs> there we go, down time. What's going to happen now is that they're obviously going to use that water that are in the pipes. They're going to create polluted water. The polluted water is going to get cleaned. And the clean water will fill up my system of showers and toilets before it outputs anything to the water reservoir. And it will output to the water reservoir as soon as this pipe is filled. This means that now, from now on, our system of showers and toilets have no liquid input from a reservoir. They only run on the liquid that are, is already stored in the system. And because the toilets create more water than they use, we're going to have water coming out of this closed system without adding any new water into it, if that makes sense. Pretty good. Yeah. And if we're going to... Have a look at... I'm going to move these. Let's make sure I don't get any slime in here when I dig it. I'm not ready to deal with any slime. Basically, you have this material right here, slime. A lot of germs on it. People will become ill if that's stored in the general base. And... Uh, and when, as soon as you dig it, the item on the ground or in a chest or anything will output polluted oxygen. You don't want to dig these blocks before you have a way of dealing with that. The reason I dug this is because I want to move my water. So you have two different reservoirs, you can form them however you want and so on. Next thing I want to show you is power. So obviously this system isn't going to work forever with a manual generator and so on. So then we're going to have to go to research power regulation. So the first one will give us a stronger battery, a switch to turn a wire on and off, and a wire bridge works just like the liquid bridge, the piping bridge we used. Then we want to research the coal generator. I'll research both. Now, 
Now we have access to a few things. We have access to the coal generator. That's very good. And we have access to... Let's see, where's the batteries? There we go. These batteries that hold a lot more than the small ones. We want to hook them up. And into our system. We can then get rid of these. Obviously, we need someone to go put coal into this for us to get power. There we go. Now we don't need the duplicant running on a wheel to get power. We got a coal generator. However, the coal generator produces carbon dioxide because it's burning coal. So keep that in mind. But you're gonna have to deal with that. But actually, let's let's look at this new duplicant because we got one ready. I never showed you the screen when creating the game, looking at all these different things. But obviously, we have their attributes, which uh, changes how well they do different things. Let's see if we got one that's good at anything. Not really, because you have, you want ones that have interests in the work that you want them to do. And we want them to have kind of a high uh, attribute for that job. And never minus learning, because minus learning will make them learn, like upgrade their attributes slower. Uh, but yeah, we can just grab one which doesn't have a annoying trait that's gonna ruin for us. I'll name him random one. Print. There we go. He can have this bed. The thing about power is that power becomes very annoying uh, after a while to deal with. And here's the reason. I'm going to show you what happens when... Now I'm not making a very efficient base, I'm just showing you how this works. As soon as we have more than one generator, we can have other types of... Uh, types of power uh, generation but if we have things that require more than one generator it's very likely that this circuit you can see it's flashing this circuit you can see max wattage 1000 watts right but the circuit status is 0 out of 100, 1080 this 1080 means that all the machines plugged into this right now will require 1080 watts when being used since we're going over the sir uh, like the max voltage limit this is going to make wires break and we're going to have to repair them over and over and over and i'll show you how to uh how to avoid that so eventually you're going to have to switch it up you're going to have to get bigger wires um, we're gonna have to research that. So here we need heavy bolt wires, we need power transformers, and heavy bolt joint plates. Research that. The thing we need to do now, if you go to the power overlay, which is F2, I can then click X to delete stuff. I'm just deleting the wires. Let's do it like that for now. Uh, we're going to require to change things up because we have more things than the wires can handle. So we'll use the heavy watt wire. This can't pass through uh, tiles. But as we can see now, when we hover on this one, max voltage is 20 kilowatts, so 20,000 watts, right? But if we plug this wire into this thick one, it's still going to break the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build... Uh, I'm going to build these small power transformers. And I'm going to have two of them right now. And then I'm going to plug it in to our heavy wire. Like that. And if we play... Oh yeah, we need an output as well. 
there we go. So now we can see that each of these two wires has a thousand watts max wattage each. So we can change things up, get rid of those wires, and oh, never mind. Let's just do this. There we go. Everything has power. And the difference is that this upper circuit now is when everything's on, it uses 720 watts. This lower one uses 360. So now the wires won't break. And why we don't we don't want to pull this heavy wire all around the base. We want to make a center for it, like a power center or something. Because each of these wires Let's see, on status, they do minus 22.5 decor in 6 tile radius, each one of them. So if we go to our decor screen, remem remember this affects their morale. Right here it's plus 50, this is a pretty good place for them to run through. Down here it's minus 300. Let's see, if we go here... Yeah, minus 300, I think is max I can find. 314. Here, 340, right there. So we don't... <laughs> we don't really want this heavy wire throughout the base. I did that mistake on my last playthrough, and all of a sudden I had 10 du duplicates just puking everywhere, and you know, destroying stuff and so on. So... Now we have control over power, or at least we know how to deal with power. We can get power from different things. You can burn coal, you can pump natural gas into a generator, hydrogen, petroleum, steam turbine, and solar panels. Uh, you're probably going to use manual generator, coal generator, and natural gas. Your first playthrough. And let's see if we have any geysers around. I'm gonna sheet so I can see everything. Chlorine. That's not what we want. We want this one. Uh, uh, uh. This is a pretty bad seed to build. This is a pretty bad map because we don't have any. At least that we can see. Let's see if we can find any. You can find geysers, like, behind blocks. I'll probably not find any randomly like this. But you know, it's worth a try. What's that gas? Oh. Nope. Well, basically, if you find a geyser, like this one, it outputs gas. Then you can put a pump in here that pumps natural gas to this natural gas generator. And you probably want to put it above your uh, polluted water reservoir, because when it uses the natural gas to make power, it'll output carbon dioxide through pipes into like air vents. It'll output uh, polluted water and just drip it from the machine down. Uh, so you kind of want to have it over this reservoir if possible, or it's its own that you pump into a proper place for it. But yes, that's most of the things you need to keep in mind when playing. The last thing that kills me most of the time when I play is heat, which is F3. Yeah, so we have heat from different directions right now, but as soon as I start using uh, like geysers and stuff like that, and I have a lot of machinery, for example, these coal generators produce heat, heat's gonna rise in my base. And that's not good, because plants are gonna stop growing, your, your colonists are gonna get low morale, and you'll eventually die from heat unless you deal with it. There's a few ways to deal with it. Uh, I usually do it in two ways. I find these uh, ice biomes, I collect these wee swords. you just uproot these with your colonists, then you can plant them in your base using a flower pot. And it'll be here, and the, 
the thing about Wii Sports is they cool everything around them. So they're very useful. And since I will be pumping quite a lot of hot water and hot gases into my base as well, I usually make a room with them. I'll show you. This is the last thing in this tutorial anyway. So I'll show you in my current playthrough. It's gonna look a bit complicated for most people who's new to the game, but it's good to see, I reckon. Uh, here we go, Optimistic Crew, I named my colony. So I've made a room with Wii Swords that I pump my ga hot gases and my hot water through to cool it down before entering the base. Oh, here we go. So this is my current playthrough. Oh god damn it. Wait. No. Oh, good. Uh, this is my room. I'll play it at normal speed for you. So these Wii Swords cool the air around them. So if you look at the temperature screen, it looks like this. It's minus like 21, minus 15. Like it's very cold in here. And I have gases. This is oxygen going through the room, so if you look at the temperature of it, here in the pipe it's 42 degrees, then it goes into the room and turns around, and when it leaves the room it's at, well, 5 degrees. This one gets even cooler, and it comes out at minus 16, which is good, because then it cools as it goes through and then enters the base. I also pump quite a bit of water into this from steam geysers. geysers. Uh, the thing about using these is that it gets very warm, but there's a few ways to deal with that. For example, this one down here, I'm pumping into, let's, let me just show you on this, oh, into this carbon skimmer. You remember I told you it uses water to get rid of carbon dioxide, but it has a very special feature. All the liquid that comes out of it, <coughs> sorry, out of it, the polluted water is at 40 degrees, no matter what temperature it went in with. So when I pump liquid from here, that's between 50 and 70 degrees, just up to this thing, and it outputs 40 degrees, no matter what I do. So that's a good way to get extra water from these, without doing too much heat. Another trick you need to know before I let you go is that when you make tiles out of different materials, they have different uh, effects. Obviously all constructions have. But if you build them out of a, a bas <laughs> what is it called? Abyssalite. It has a, it's an insulator. So heat and cold, like temperature, won't transfer in between them. And the entire outline of my base is made from it. So if you look at the temperature screen, like here, out here it's 40 degrees, here it's 28 degrees. So my entire outline of the base is made from it. It's a good way to keep heat in in check as long as you know how to cool the base inside of it. With that said, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope it was useful for you and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!